I'm going to take you through a sample of a really good argumentation essay written by one of my students. Um, starting with formatting, I'm just going to show you some little details that could make this paper even better. Make sure that you don't have extra line spaces between your heading and the title, so backspace, or the title and the content of the essay, so backspace that as well. Make sure that your content is not all centered. Sometimes students forget to go back to the left justification up here um, after creating the title. All right, so this student starts with a good hook. Uh, she chose to use a question. That's one, one type of hook you could use. Um, then she bridges to her thesis. She even addresses the counter argument. Okay. And then her thesis is the last sentence of the introduction, which is exactly how it should be. A couple of little things uh, grammatically that could be changed. Um, she has children require multiple hours of activity to keep their brain and body healthy. We have more than one child, so we need more than one brain and more than one body. So that would be a revision that she could make for better grammar here. All right, and then she's using the quote burger colors to indicate when she is quoting a source um, within her paragraphs. She is going to start with an introductory topic sentence at the top and then introduce the quotation here with a signal phrase. That part is read. Then she has the quotation itself. This quotation is kind of on that hairy edge of deciding whether or not you need to use a block quotation, a block format. You use a block format if you have a quotation that's more than four lines. This one is one, two, three, four. Right at it. So no block quotation needed. Um, she has the parenthetical citation that matches whatever's first in the work cited for the source. Here she's introduced the quotation with the title of the article. That's good. Title of the article is in quotation marks as it should be. And then she has put the author names here. And if I look in the work cited, that should be what I see first for this source. Let me look. Rich and Greer is what I'm looking for in the works cited. Here's Rich and here's, hmm, that's a different spelling. Maybe I have it wrong. Yes. So she has it spelled correctly. Um, for two authors in a work cited, you have the last name, comma, first name of the first author, and then the first and last name of the second author. Um, so remember that. Here's one with one author. You have last name, comma, first name. Here's another one with two authors, last name, comma, first name, and the second author. All right, so good work cited. Her parenthetical citation did the job it should by taking me to the first thing in the work cited for that source. So go back and double check all of your parenthetical citations. It should be whatever's first in the work cited. If you have used the author's names to introduce the quotation, then you don't necessarily need the parenthetical citation. But make sure whatever's first in the work cited is either in your introductory phrase or in your parenthetical citation. All right, the green sentence. After a quotation, anytime you quote something, you should respond to that quotation in some way, either by restating it in your own words to emphasize the most important part of what you've quoted, or to react to this quotation. Why does this matter? Why is this important? Why have you chosen this quotation? Again, you're not going to use first person in this, so you're not going to say, I chose this quotation because. Also, I don't want you to use the word quote when you're talking about things you've quoted. Talk about the ideas. If you use the word quote, 
it seems like you're just being forced to quote things and you want to make sure the reader understands that you have quoted something, but it should be evident from the way you have formatted your paragraph that it is a quotation. And you want the focus to be on ideas, not on the structure of the essay. That's another reason we don't say in the introduction or anywhere in the essay, I'm going to write about, or this essay will be about, or I'm going to compare whatever, or I'm going to argue that, whatever. Okay, so you're keeping all the first person out of there. The final sentence is brown because it connects to the brown sentence at the top. So your topic sentence that you introduced these ideas with should be followed at the end with another connection to whatever you started with at the top. And really connect also to your thesis. What is your argument? Remind us what your point is. Pretend that your reader forgets like Dory on Finding Nemo and can't remember from the beginning of the paragraph to the end of the paragraph what it is you're arguing. And certainly can't remember from the thesis to the bottom of each paragraph what it is you're arguing. All right, the second paragraph does things in much the same way, starting with a topic sentence, a main idea. Here's another kind of big quote. Um, so you're going to want to double check and make sure you don't need a block quotation. This is half a line and then three other lines. So it, it meets that standard of being uh, uh, not over four lines. So you're good there. Notice that she introduces her quotation with the name of a person and then has the quotation in here. So this one could use a little work. Um, it appears that that author is not listed in there. So I'm guessing that she's quoting somebody who was mentioned in the article that she has here, Engage in Fitness and Fun. Let's see if we can find that article. Yeah, it's this one here. So apparently this person wrote the article and it was called Engage Children in Fitness and Fun. And this person quoted this other person she mentions. So I would mention the other person by full name. This person should have a full name. Um, and then I will show you how to format that introduction for a quote within a quote. So I have come back down to the Works Cited. I'm going to copy that article title because I want to use that as part of my introductory phrase. I'm going to take out the According To. And put that intro introductory phrase with the title of the article instead. And so this person is cited in the article. And I want to make that all red. I'm doing that. I'm going to add a little more um, credential to the article title by saying what, what publication it is. So I'm going to go back to the works cited and find that. All right. The Buffalo News. So I'm going to show that this is a major publication by giving that place in my introductory phrase. So I have this person who is cited in the Buffalo News article, Engage Children in Fitness and Fun, says, all right, 
or I could even say insists or argues or whatever, whatever kind of word fits there. And then again, what I need in my works site or my parenthetical citation should be whatever's first in my works cited for that source. And again, that is the author's last name. So I'm going to just copy and paste that and put that where it goes in the works cited or in the parenthetical citation. And I keep changing those words up because they should be things that match. Works cited and parenthetical citation should match. They should be something I can draw a line between the parenthetical citation to the first thing on the works cited for that source. Then you have the next sentence that responds to that quotation and then the last sentence connects to the topic sentence of the paragraph and the thesis of the whole essay. Here we have a longer quotation. Uh, you have a block format. So starting with a topic sentence, um, you have the topic sentence and then instead of a signal phrase, generally for a block quotation, you have a full sentence followed by a comma and then no quotation marks. The period will be at the end, unlike standard quotations where you move the period to after the parenthetical citation. When you have no quotation marks, the period goes at the end, then no period after the parenthetical citation, only for a block quotation. All right, then we have um, a reaction to that quotation, and we have a final sentence that connects to that that top sentence again and the argument for the whole essay. And then you have um, your closing paragraph, your conclusion. Do not start with the phrase in conclusion. Start with a good restatement of your thesis, that should statement, whatever you're arguing. Then review some of the main points that can be done within a single sentence. It could be more than one sentence. Um, and then leave the reader with an understanding of what you want them to believe or do based on your argument. So that parting, parting thought for your reader. Again, your works cited. Make sure you have capitalized both works and cited that it is works for more than one work, so make it plural. No extra line spaces between sources. Sometimes students want to put extra line spaces. That is wrong, don't do that. Make sure you have a hanging indent. Um, and that's it.